Families aren't only for inviting to Thanksgiving dinner. In computing, you also have family trees, file systems with directories that are different with each operating system. Though your real family may be disorderly, there's structure within your Linux box that's important to know. Brought to you by GoToAssist. Hey, I'm Nixie Pixel, and you're watching OS Alt, your source for open source. I'm pretty flabbergasted how many people, when they run Linux, just throw a bunch of files in random directories with no real rhyme or reason. It's good to know who your parents are in real life, and the same goes for directories in your computer. Unlike most operating systems, Linux considers directories and even your computer's hardware to be files. So before we touch on how to create, delete, copy, rename, link, and set permissions for files, it's useful to know what they mean. The directory you're inside at the moment is called the current directory, when in the command line, it can be kind of easy to forget where you're working. So typing the pwd command, which means print working directory, will tell you your current directory. As you may guess, the parent directory is above your current directory. Every directory except the top level has a parent. Right now I'm in the CPU folder, and my parent directory is slash dev. There's no place like home. This is a user's personal directory and tends to be the folder I see tons of stuff stored in, as mentioned before. I guess it makes sense because typically with Linux distros, it's really the only spot where you have permission to write files by default. Also, if you're sharing your computer with someone else, other users can only mess around with items in their home folder and not yours. They can't even list or see files in your home directory, so have a field day with that knowledge. Ah, the genesis of your Linux system marked only by a slash. Root is the top of the file chain, so every other file and directory on your system is under this one. Never store files directly here, just don't do it. Oh, and it's also easy to confuse root with slash root. Slash root is the home directory for the super user, or root user. I literally call files slash root aloud to avoid any confusion. Another directory you really don't want to store your personal stuff in, slash user contains user applications and all the files needed to run them, like documents, images, source code, and more. Slash user is the biggest directory on a file system, so I recommend giving it its own partition. Here's a video I've done explaining how to do that. This one is fun. Slash Etsy stores your configuration files for your Linux system and other software. Most of these are text files and can be tweaked using a text editor, like slash Etsy slash init, which dictates your boot procedures and the list goes on and on. Remember that in Linux, devices are treated like files and you can write them as such. Slash dev has your device files that relate to your computer's hardware components. For example, my keyboard and printer's info is located here, and here are some files for my mouse. In a similar vein, slash mount shows you the files of your physical storage devices like hard drives, externals, DVD-ROMs, etc. I'm running on a virtual machine, so nothing shows up here for me as they only appear when mounted, which I'll explain in another video. Kernel panics don't mean you have to panic. Slash lost and found contains all of the restored files that would have been lost after your system crashes or something strange happens with a mounted device. Every partition has a lost and found in its upper directory. Try to be consistent with your creation and naming of files. Use all lowercase if you can and avoid spaces, question marks, and asterisks. Also remember files with a dot at the beginning are hidden and don't show up when you list or ls them. The risk of weird naming is because it's difficult to remember, but also if you dual boot with Windows, you could get in a lot of trouble by using special characters in your files. For instance, the Linux file system uses the forward slash in path names and Windows uses the backslash. So in other words, a Linux file by any other name doesn't smell as sweet. I hope you're now better able to understand your file system, directory structure, and folder terminology through my use of copious familial analogies. Thanks for watching OS Alt. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on next Friday's episode of All Things Open Source. Don't want to do that now. Who gives thumbs up anymore? It's like giving a high five to yourself. My beloved mother is amazing, but just can't understand computers. I had to explain to her that a link was a blue underlined thing. Now in IT work, I realize it's much more advanced than that, but the problem's still the same. You don't want to have to try to provide support in an inefficient way that involves you talking on the phone for endless hours and not getting any resolution. Sorry, Mom. GoToAssist solves all those issues in one easy-to-use platform, and it's from Citrix, the leader in remote support. 
That's right, you can help out multiple clients simultaneously live or unattended from the comfort of your own PC, Mac, or mobile device. So there's your remote support covered. Oh, and with our service desk feature, you can log the problems you have and track the resolution so there's no redundancy or trying to fix the same issue twice. GoToAssist has monitoring that predicts and spots out potential issues at their source before they get any bigger. You can get all this and so much more, and for a limited time, it'll cost nothing for you to try it out. Sign up for your special 30-day free trial today. Just visit gotoassist.com, click on the Try It Free button, and use the promo code OSALT. That's go to assist.com, promo code OSL. What do you have to lose?